So you've written lots of Antwerp playbooks and you want to share them with the world. You probably realize by now that you need to package them somehow so that you can distribute them. Or perhaps you just want to reuse them within your own organization. Well, that's where Antwerp roles come into it. And that's what I want to talk about today. Throughout your time working with Ansible and just within your organization, you will actually gather up and collect quite a lot of logic throughout probably tens if not hundreds of playbooks over the course of even, even three to six months, especially if you work for a startup or a new, new organization that's just getting started with Ansible. Well, roles allow you to take that collected logic and package it into very small little packages that are very easy to reuse and very easy to distribute, very easy to share. And once you have your roles defined, you have two ways of distributing them very, very easily. You have Ansible Galaxy and you have Git, but of course you can use any version control system you like. The great thing about roles is that they can be used to package up quite a lot of things. So they have their tasks split up into playbooks. You have templates, static files, default variables, custom modules, and you can throw a lot of other things in there as well. For example, at the root of my roles, I tend to have a vagrant file, and that uses some tricky path work in order, to, in order to allow you to simply vagrant up and then test the role and develop the role and work with the role and see the effects of the role in a, for example, a CentOS 7 system. So roles are like little micro applications that are very easy to maintain. And as they grow over time, they stay maintainable. Once you've been using Ansible for maybe three to six months and you have this large collection of playbooks, finding out and splitting them up into roles is like attaining level two in Ansible land. That's because they enable a very simple structure to the remaining playbooks. That is, if you have 30 playbooks and they all manage various resources, and then you break them down into roles, you'll find that you may only have four or five playbooks that then bring in those roles accordingly. And that gives you a lot of simplicity and a much easier structure to work with. As I said earlier, roles encapsulate a lot of different things, but one of the primary things they encapsulate is default variables. Now, if you take the time to define a default value for all of the variables the role needs in order to operate, what you actually do there is you give a very you give your users of that role a small little application they can deploy really really easily with very little work very little friction is necessary to get that role moving but it also enables them to customize what needs to be customized another great thing about roles is the use of templates now templates as you're probably aware at this point allow you to create a file dynamically based on variables like in the case of defaults or some kind of external service or an environment var etc. So when you wrap templates up inside of a role, you use yourself quite a lot of power because that means then you can give the user of that role the option of customizing the configuration for MySQL, Apache, some kind of software, or they can template out sudo as file, for example. It, the templates are very, very powerful in roles. But in the event that you just have files that you need to upload from the role, then you can use the files directory and you can use the copy module, for example, and that allows you just to move static files around as and when you need them. And as I said earlier, with time, you'll end up splitting your playbooks up into roles, but with even more time, you'll find your roles will actually grow in size and get more and more complicated. However, you'll, you'll notice that they're actually still very much maintainable and your default variables list may grow, but it all stays in the one place or stays in the one contained little micro, micro application. So if you have a role that installs, sets up, configures and manages, let's say MariaDB or Postgres SQL, for example, what you, what you essentially have there is an on-off switch because you can take away the role and therefore it no longer manages it for you. And then you can bring it back in and then it manages it again for you. So they're almost like a little on off switch inside of your playbook. Another thing that you can contain inside of the role is documentation for that role. So you don't have to have a huge document that describes everything about your Ansible code base. You can have documentation split up per role just for that role, which makes again, much more easier to maintain. It's much easier to find it. And then when you share the role outside of your organization, the documentation goes with the role so other people will know how to use it. And finally, another great thing about roles is that because they're so contained and isolated, they're very easy to test. Again, I always include a Vagrant file with mine that allows you to Vagrant up, they spin up in a CentOS 7 system, and then you can go in and see the effects. And then you can make changes and test those changes immediately with a Vagrant provision command. So they're just really, really easy to test. Another way you can test them is with the absolutely brilliant test kitchen that's another great way of testing them. But if you just have 
hundreds of playbooks everywhere doing all kinds of random things. They become really, really hard to test, very, really hard to make changes. And so with all this in mind, I recommend that you give roles a lot of attention, put the work into splitting up your playbooks into roles because it will pay off in huge dividends later on down the line. It's a great investment. It's a, it's a great investment of your time. So I hope after today's video, you'll have a much better idea of just how brilliant roles are and how they can really, really help you and your organization make sense of and maintain all of that logic and all of that state that you'll no doubt have within your network. So if you've got any questions or any feedback at all, then do let us know in the comments. And remember to give us a like and a subscribe. That would be great. And of course, have a wonderful weekend. And for the record, it's for Movember.